Welcome to another Open Philosophy video. Today we will be continuing our discussion of targets and evolution. In this series of videos we've been applying the projection paradigm which I described in my introductory video number one to the process of evolution. As you may recall the projection paradigm suggests that we look at processes from multiple points of view in order to develop a fuller and deeper model. The flat view of evolution is the mechanistic view. It looks at the mechanisms, sees that they are adequate to accomplish what is done, and ends there. Another view is the teleological view, and establishing that requires considerable analysis. We began by looking at the history of the laws of nature, and we found the idea of the laws of nature first appear in Jeremiah the prophet. Jeremiah uses the fixity of the laws of nature as a indication of God's constancy. We then saw that this idea that the laws of nature were the will of God continued through the development of modern science and up to and including Darwin's own view that the laws of nature were designed. It was only after the time of Darwin that the idea that the laws of nature were the designed will of God was forgotten. It was forgotten when evolution was hijacked for use as a weapon in the culture wars, a weapon in support of an atheistic worldview. If the laws of nature are designed, and if evolution is a consequence of them, then evolution is designed. So we looked at the question of whether the laws of nature were intentional in video 14. In video 15, we looked at how the laws of nature need to be explained and found that they lead us directly to a God who sustains them in operation. Then in video 16, we saw that randomness is not something objective, it's not an objective property of the world, but it is subjective. It is a measure of human ignorance. So the idea that evolution is random only says that human beings can't predict its processes. We then looked at the improbability argument against evolution. The sequences of genes in evolution are very improbable. In order to overcome the improbability objection, Dawkins developed a computer program as a demonstration. The way he overcame improbability in his program was by pre-programming a target and then comparing random variations to the target. That led us to suspect that evolution is not a random process, but is target-driven. We found that the laws of nature imply target forms, that organisms evolving from different genetic stock converge on similar forms. These forms are therefore implicit in or pre-programmed in the laws of nature. In this video, we will be continuing our discussion of targets and evolution by looking at the new theory of punctuated evolution. Evolution's target forms are dynamically similar to chaos theory's strange attractors, which are dynamic traps eventually enthralling nonlinear systems. Attractors occur in phase spaces, whose dimensions are the value and rate of change of each state descriptor. When a system is enthralled, it stays near a central point, oscillating in fascinating, non-repeating trajectories. Here we see 5,000 points converging on the same strange attractor from various initial conditions. Just as the laws of nature guide the evolution of different species into the same form in convergent evolution. Systems trapped by the same attractor are objectively similar. As with convergent evolutions, the final patterns are implicit in the governing laws. This is more than an analogy. For René Thome, developed a nonlinear mathematical model for the evolution of organic systems. While the exact final state depends on the initial conditions, a wide range of initial conditions will eventually be enthralled by the same attractor. One might imagine attractors as black holes trapping everything in certain regions of space, where the space is defined by the initial conditions. Thus, as convergent evolution shows, objectively similar forms can derive from a wide variety of initial states. Evolutionary theorist Stephen Jay Gould has called this the clumping of taxa in morphospace. 
The relative stability of the strange attractor model accords with the pivotal punctuated equilibrium theory developed by Niles Eldritch and Stephen J. Gould in 1972. In it, species remain stable for long eras, punctuated by periods of branching speciation. This contrasts with Charles Darwin's gradualism and was unexpected by most evolutionary biologists. Eldritch had found that Paleozoic trilobites remained unchanged throughout their occurrence in the geological record, while new species appeared suddenly. Most species, during their geological history, do not change in any appreciable way, or else they fluctuate mildly with no apparent direction. Phyletic gradualism is very rare. What does this mean for us? Well, Darwin had proposed that species vary continuously with no direction and no goal. We can see this in the diagram. What actually happens is quite different. Species develop rapidly, and then once they reach the goal, the target form, they stop evolving, and only very slightly around their target form for the rest of their existence in the fossil record. Thus, the new theory of evolution built on Eldritch and Gould's idea of punctuated equilibrium displays target forms. Evolution does not continue mindlessly, but ends once it has attained its goals. Next time we will turn to the human mind with my theory of the two subsystem mind. The two subsystems are the intentional subsystem and the neurophysiological subsystem or the brain. To learn how these interact, see my next video. For those who are interested in more information on mind or randomness and evolution, see my article, which is on my website. Thank you very much for your time and attention.